Greetings, humans and earthlings. <laughs> um, I'm excited to uh, have you here with me to uh, discuss female comedy genius which the world needs to be so much more aware of as it is the only hope for the future of humanity. And my guest is the perfect guest to discuss that with me, Kim Kongdun. <laughs> yeah, you got it. I said it right. No one ever gets it. Yeah, no it's one. an unusual name. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you for having me. This is fucking awesome. Now we're going to cut to the... There's no cut. Oh, I thought you did that. <laughs> that guy comes in. So you see. Oh, yeah, but I do that now. My patience is wearing thin <laughs> in this <laughs> synthetic bullshit fucking world we're living in. Oh, you see. Listen, I, I love you, and um, I wanted to go right into the first night I ever met you. Mm -hmm. It was at the magical vortex otherworldliness of Mitzi Shore's karmic comedy store on Sunset Boulevard. Yes, yeah, it was, uh, what a night. I was so excited when you were there, and I tried to be really cool about it. And I thought you were really cool. I'm, gl I'm glad you thought because I stalked you to the back. I saw you go back there. I said, I'm going to let her get a little high and then I'm going to go say hello. <laughs> I'm going to let her get stoned first and then I'm going to say hello. But I wanted to say hi to you so bad. I've been a fan forever. And I, we were talking about this earlier. I, comedians are narcissistic. So I've always been like, she's just like me. I love her. <laughs> <laughs> I love her. That's how you know if somebody's really funny. Hey, they remind me of me. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Pure narcissism. Right? Pure narcissism. Doesn't that isn't that what makes a comic? Yeah, it it's is. A crazy but it's thing. it's like it's like if narcissism and self hatred had a baby. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. That's what a comedian is. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I said it's like a fucking virus or something. I said it's a curse, but it's also a blessing because you can't stop it. You mm -hmm. always have to have the snappy thing. If you get slapped a million fucking times, it don't stop. I know. It's always, a, yeah, you think so. you, And it comes right. out the snappy comeback. Yeah, I know. It's I a know. virus. It, I know. It just is so natural. And to hold it in feels like you're going to get ill. If I have to hold an opinion about someone, I'm like, oh, God, I think about it and I really have to let it go. I think it's also you are right. It's a little bit of we probably have all a little OCD where we, the thought we have in our head, we have to put it out. That yeah. sounds like Tourette's more like it Tourette's. is a Tourette's yeah. thing. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, because I found out I do have Tourette's. Oh, really? Yeah, because all mental illness is on a scale like Is that autism? the excuse you use to just say the N word on this podcast? <laughs> no. yeah, much. I have a medical Tourette's. <laughs> <laughs> My doctor says i can't help it <laughs> no but then there's the issue of knowing that you're taking your life in your hands yeah so then you don't really have that severe a case of tourette's right however i do but i refuse to be triggered by the fascist fucking government that wants to trigger me so they can take my life hence i keep my mental illness on the scale you see. Yeah, you got to control your mental illness. At being a comic. Yeah. Now, it's one thing to be a crazy bitch, but to be a crazy bitch and a comedian. Yeah. That's out of hand. Oh, God. <laughs> I can't think of anything least attractive for a straight man. as <laughs> a woman with a microphone who amplifies her own voice <laughs> and has, like, strong opinions. <laughs> it's so unattractive. I'm so scared I'll never get married. No. Never. <laughs> no. Never do. Well, Don't you got married, like, five never. times, Mom. Huh? You, yeah, you, you know. did it. Well, but that was before I was famous, though. No, two of them I only had after. one child post-fame. But and ironically, husbands. he's the most balanced. That's interesting. But that's because I created him in the test tube, which brings me to the night we met at the comedy store. Yes. And I said, I don't know what brought it up, but we ended up, it, I, I knew that I had known you. I got the feeling like I knew you. So uh, I don't even remember. I remember you asked me how old I was, uh -huh. and we mentioned and you, and then you had your kids with you that night, and then I think you asked if we had kids. Do you guys have any kids? And I said no, I want some, but 
I need to freeze my eggs. I can't afford them. And I just straight up said, can I have one of you? Or you said, I have eggs. I do ice. have eggs. I said, I have six on ice. I said, that sounds like you only need five. <laughs> I'll take one. Yeah. You don't need six. Yeah. And I, I told you, you could have one of my fertilized eggs if you really wanted to have a child, mm-hmm. you could you could have one of my fertilized eggs. And I might take her up on it. The next podcast episode we're doing, we're in, implanting the egg the inside in of me. So we, keep a lookout. We used to do that back in the uh, 70s. All the lesbians in the collective I was in, I was in a woman's <laughs> collective. Wait, were you a lesbian at some point? No, I was a housewife then. They, they let straight women in then. <laughs> <laughs> but we made the horrible mistake, the straight women, the mothers, we made the horrible mistake and let uh, more than two lesbians in and they took over. <laughs> oh, yeah, they're like they rabbits. Yeah, yeah. Right? <laughs> they take over and push you out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But uh, then we were, we kind of had everybody, but they drove everybody out with so their, they were... with their uh, you know, what do they used to, that's where it all started, the uh, politically correct horse shit. That's why I'm a comic, mm-hmm. was always against that. That's honestly... They told me, you can't tell your jokes can you say the word lover instead of husband? Yeah. Uh, that's what they said to me when I was doing my act on stage. Like, I wasn't going through enough shit where no man would let me on any fucking stage. Uh, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. But then the bitches that are supposed to be on my side go, can you not say husband? Can you say lover? Or we can't allow you stage time here. I go, you fascist bitch. You <laughs> fucking just the same. I'll say what I fucking want to say. Oh, God. It is it is a blessing and a curse not to have a filter. I, you know how many meetings I've been in with like, like big com- you know the networks and stuff and i'll pitch something and they'll go like oh we're just like looking for something with more like with social justice and i go oh all right more unfunny tv i'll just say it <laughs> i was like there's already so many good things out keep doing that that's working tv sucks it have does. you seen tv oh, it's horrible. there yeah. is nothing I good i can't watch the shows anymore it's like I I I don't really give a fuck what people do personally with their own lives. I and it's not even like I'm trying to be like I don't care what people do. Be you. I could care if you live or die. Like I don't give a fuck. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I don't care what people do. But like to push <laughs> to push the shit so far to where it feels unnatural and forced. It's like it's making for bad TV. We yeah, don't need like. Two, uh, two lesbian cops, one black, one white, named the Fosters, who are fostering children, and like, <laughs> are, like, and one of them is trans, and the other one's dating a, like a drag queen. Like, we don't need the episode to be like that. It could be a little bit of everything. Yeah, we could we could put throw it in like a seasoning every once in a while. <laughs> Right? right. You know, I agree, people but- deserve to have freaky trans sex if they want to, but like let's not oversaturate well, the market it's, it's, with anything. It's just all about the outraged television by the outraged. People <laughs> overcompensate with every opinion mm-hmm. they have. If you just like were just chill, add your opinion and just d- kind of didn't care, we'd all be fine. Yeah. But everybody is like this is the thing and it's only that. Right. And so I'm like, who cares? It's the lesbians, I'm telling you. <laughs> it's nothing, but they don't think nothing's funny. My sister's a fucking lesbian. Mine too. Is she? <laughs> yeah. And they don't hardly think nothing's funny. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> They're known right? for not having They're a sense of humor. They're against humor. You're not the first to say that. <gasps> Some oh! of them are my, still my fans, and they come up and they say, thank God for you, Roseanne. Because I'm never going to go with the mother kind. You know, we understand humor and freedom of speech. Yeah. We're not fucking Nazis like them. Yeah. And you look at them and they all look like, what's her name with the pink hair? It looks like a fucking Nazi. Oh, uh, yeah. With pink hair and a pussy hat. And my daughter, uh, the pussy hat thing. Oh, this is the best joke I ever wrote. Tell me. Okay. Okay. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I go, looking back, when y'all were in the street with them pussy hats, little did <laughs> you crazy. all fucking were transphobic, because not every woman has a pussy, pussy. you transphobic bitches, right? Uh, yeah. Am I right? It should have been pussy dick hats, you're right. Yes. Yeah. There was nobody walking around with a big old dick on their head. No one. Except me. And I did that video years ago where I actually got one of those rubber dicks that they wear. <laughs> I filmed that. 
Yeah. Yeah. Because was, my was sister's a lesbian. All her friends are lesbians. So a, quite a few of them have appendages. It's no fucking big deal. So what do you let, mean? Oh, you huh? mean like sex toy appendages? Are you talking like oh, trans men? It's oh, yeah. no fucking big deal. Half of them are rabbis up there mm-hmm. in Marin County. So you do you feel like um, out of like all the people that are comedy fans, lesbians get the most offended? Yes. Yes, they are the hardest to make laugh unless they're drunk. <laughs> but, the- but when they're drunk, they are the best audience. And that is why I charge them so much. <laughs> I think it's white really? women that are the worst. White wi- white women right now. The are Karens. The, worst. the Karens. White women are For the me, worst. For me, my worst audiences have always been like when I do shows at like Soho houses. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like those shows, like really rich young rich. elites. Yeah. Uh-huh. Ugh. Disgusting. They are. They'll horrible. they'll come up to you after a show and be like, um, I really liked your set, but I just have a quick note. And I'm like, <laughs> oh no. I are literally have to be women? like, get the fuck. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. And I was like, get out of my f- fucking face <laughs> like what are you talking about what You're are the insane. notes like is it like the I same d- note? won't even hear them oh, i'm like good. stop talking to me immediately i don't want one note isn't it crazy yeah it's crazy i it- don't want a note from you you've never had a job yeah well that's why that's why they're so bored <laughs> this is the shit they come up with because they're not working yeah that's what it is can we just go back to the egg thing because i think you guys brushed it's over it's also this what is a big we deal. said it's yeah. bitch on bitch crime yeah. it is bitch on bitch crime which is why i like that we united and you're yeah. giving me one of your eggs this that, is really that's women empowerment yeah. that's right that's women empowerment I'm but you guys to, are really doing this right? i want to have roseanne are baby. you really into this because i'm i'm being serious i don't think it's a joke i'm kind of into the thought of Im- <laughs> well she would nurture the you know because I went to a lot of expense yeah. to create that those Let's do a contract. and I'm Puerto Rican so no, I would just not- love a free egg. <laughs> so- <laughs> you know it's fertilized though. You didn't know that when you got here. I didn't Bear. know it came with cum on it. Yeah, no, I, it's, that's not- <laughs> it's already a human. Yeah, yeah. See, is it STD tested? Why, no, yeah. yeah, it's all tested. <laughs> it's all, it's all that's why I introduced you to my son because they're his siblings. It's yeah. going to be his brother. It'll look just like him. Yeah, or, or sister. sister. Yeah, whatever. Are you still into it there? Or you want? I'm still into it. Yeah, he's cute. He's really no, he's, he's really very cute. cute. But like, did you want uh, you wanted to meet a man and have a kid with a man? Because or? he's half yeah. Norwegian. Uh, the problem I was like wanting to meet a man for the to come. Yeah, yeah. But like, what's yeah. the what's the father? What are the <laughs> They're genetics Norwegian. here? Okay, Norwegian. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't really know what that is. Or that's, where, uh, that's, that's Switzerland. Near there. Yeah. His okay. IQ is probably Norway, 85. Norway, Finland. It's in the okay. high you know, 80s. Yeah, yeah. White. They were called the White. enfants mm-hmm. in the Russian Revolution. They called them the enfants, okay. which meant the soldiers because okay. they used them because they were fierce yeah. battle goers. A- so okay. that's yeah. why I biologically engineered my son to be that because... The other half of them is Jewish, and you know that's all mental with a withered body and oh, ache yeah. and joints. ancestral trauma. And yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, aching I don't and yeah. groaning and schlepping, <laughs> yeah. whining. So I wanted him Balance to. It. Yeah, I wanted a human that was didn't have <laughs> all the shit, and it was. You it wanted was, him rich but strong. <laughs> yeah, I wanted him mentally fit. Yeah, yeah. in every way. Yeah. Like, what would it be like? I have no idea. You know? Yeah. So, okay, so there's that. He's my genius creation. That's beautiful. And he's like MMA fighting fucking bad, ugly motherfucker. You know, like, I seen his dad. Here's why I bred with him. Because his dad used to be my bodyguard. One time I seen him go down the hallway ahead of me. We were drunk. He did two flips in the air, came down, and then turned around and kicked the door in backward. Yeah, that so would have got go, me pregnant. Yeah. <laughs> that would have done it. Right? Yeah. So, yeah, that's impressive. So well, if you're that's in, let's in drop the, the egg, plus all the shit going through stand-up comedy for 40 fucking yeah. years of torture. Yeah. But it'll have none of your genetic coding. That's fine. I, I'm wondering but if she'll even be I'm the strong nurture. enough. Yeah, I'm a, you, yeah, I'm even wondering nurture if... Nurture or nature. So it'll be nature nurtured yeah. by and how I would describe you is iconoclasta wow. iconoclasty what the, does that the, mean? it means you are a supreme iconoclast which means a deep deep 
thinker that can hold two disparate opinions in your mind at one time. It's brilliant. And that's why I just love you. Yeah. And you're a genius because tell about how you did your special all on your own. Mm-hmm. Talk about you didn't wait for mm-hmm. anybody coming and saying you. Yeah, I am. Um, I mean, and normally I think you sell, you do deals and then you sell the special and then you film it. But I just, I hooked up with this place called Jam in the Van. They do really great content, have the best cameras. And we, I went up to them. I was like, this would be a great place to do a special. We should work together. And I filmed it myself. I did it like exactly how they film the specials and I have it all cut up. And then I'm just going to bring that to people because I feel like it's easier to show people what you already have than to mm-hmm. give them this idea. Because every Cause I, if I waited it. on they'll people's ideas, it. also, if I waited on people's ideas, they would never happen. Right. I have mm-hmm. people that are like, hey, don't work on this show because I have a better idea for yeah, you. Yeah, and I've been that. like, cool, mm-hmm. and still worked on the show and don't hear for them for three years. I'm yeah, like, no I would have been waiting for you. And then they stole everything you told them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and they got 15 sitcoms off it. <laughs> Everyone's a liar and a thief, <laughs> yeah, including no me. Shit. This yeah. is your wallet. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> So you've already filmed the special? That's what you did this last I week. I did it right? two nights ago. Yeah. How did it go? Now she's gonna own her yeah. shit and she's gonna that's what sell to her own shit. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. How, how did it that's go? That's the way to go. Awesome. Yeah. It was so fun. I'm it's sorry called we Childless make it. MILF and hoping that it'll be somewhere around Valentine's Day. Okay. Childless MILF is a very paradoxical childless MILF. Mm-hmm. Jake. Yeah. It make I mean, she's a childless MILF. Mm-hmm. MILF, you don't have to be a mom. You just have to be over 30. Yeah. That's how it is in the oh. porn categories. I was trying to explain this to her earlier. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I you're just a you MILF because you're. what you were telling me about. <laughs> no, it's not just me. I mean, this is just the way it is. If you're, how old are you? I'm 33. So in yeah, porn, I think when you turn like 24, you're a MILF. It's 20. Which is sad. Yeah. My, yeah. It's what? 21? It's like 28. My friend Mercedes Carrera is a porn star and she was making porn and then one day she was in the MILF category and she's like, oh. I'm, it must be 28. I must wow. be 28 now. And that's what it's she like is. when you're when you die at 27, you're a legend. But yeah. when you're in porn at 28, you're just a MILF. You're just a yeah. MILF. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you're a stepmom. Yeah. Well, it is over the hill for, you know, yeah. for the uh, porn I guess you fast. for the porn industry. It the, is. Yeah. The younger, the better. I but guess. But I think people look younger now than they ever have before. You ever see like high schoolers in like the 1930s? Yeah, they're I'm like, in their are 40s. you 85 years <laughs> old? Yeah, they did look old. They looked old as fuck. I don't know what's going on, but it was disgusting. <laughs> yeah, they did look old. They well, people old. died like, earlier. Yeah. yeah. You aged, I think they aged faster. Yeah. That's like true. you got to, if you was thirty and not married, you was an old maid. Yeah, yeah. You were a spinster, spinster at this age. Yeah. Yeah. Is that what they called it? A spinster. Uh-huh. You would be a spinster back in the day. Yeah, oh, thirty three, not married with kids. Yeah. But I'm glad you're not married because if you were married, you wouldn't be doing stand up. Am I right? No, and I am like I kind of don't even really like who I become when I'm in a relationship. I am yeah. like I get so obsessed with my boyfriends, and I want to spend all my time with them, and like work doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. I'm like a lover, so if I'm in love, I'm like fully in. And it's really bad for work, which is why I'm either going to be funny or and alone. Funny or, or die. Yeah, or not <laughs> funny with someone. Those are the choices it feels like. So isn't it part of the whole crazy to be? Yeah, yeah. It sounds OCD almost. Yeah, it is like OCD. Like your relationships are obsessive compulsive. But then mm-hmm. when you want to, here's yeah. the bad part. When you start wanting to tell jokes again, you deliberately sabotage that relationship <laughs> to get rid of that. Partner. Absolutely, isn't that sad? It is sad. There's like, uh, poor- but it's almost a you have to tell the jokes again, and it's almost like a panic. Like if you don't leave in the next two days, stand up uh-huh. is done forever. Like you have to go. It's yeah. like crazy when you feel like you have to do stand up. You have to do it quick, or like I start panicking, like yeah. internally. I get like very anxious, and I don't know. What is it? I don't know. <laughs> God, I don't know. It's all of us have it too, huh? Yeah, and the the thing that makes me is really it the sad, hearing the laughter. What is it? I don't know. <laughs> Whenever you're on stage and you're riffing and you think of something, doesn't it feel like it pops out of mm-hmm. the air and like? like it just yeah, pops right like you channels. didn't think of it yeah it, it wasn't from, from you yeah it I literally think it is, comes from god me the too the god god they call which it. is which is i like because i've thought of some sick shit and yeah, i'm like yeah, god's kind of funny too. god's the funniest comic of all yeah he is and he goes okay try topping this oh my god the best i remember me and my podcast partner like six months ago we were at the airport and we ran into another comedian who's 
like pretty much like, you know, blown up on YouTube and, and has a lot of following. And he sat down in front of us and he was talking to us and someone came up and was like, Hey, are you whatever to him and asked him for a picture while we were sitting there. (laughs) And then we already kind of felt like dang about it. And then when they walked away, I got a notification on my phone and it popped up and it was a payment plan for the flight I bought. (laughs) <laughs> right when he got recognized it was like you pay you owe the second part of your payment plan for your two hundred dollar <laughs> flight and my friend looked at my phone and she went god's a comedian <laughs> like he just oh my shit god. on me my friend got recognized and then my payment plan for the flight i couldn't afford came in and it is just so fun. his timing is impeccable oh, yeah. impeccable that's incredible that you wouldn't that you would uh, know it too. Yeah, yeah. The, the like the depression that I have. <laughs> <laughs> like, do you like my depression? Because I have it. Do you have it? Um, I get depressed. I don't get into full seasons of depression or oh. like weeks at a time. It's no. like a wave for you. Yeah, yeah that's me yeah. too. Yeah. You'll stay sometimes for a yeah. while. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but then, like, I get the message from God that goes, "You idiot! Can't you see the?" perfect world i've created for you the jokes just write themselves all you have to do is open your eyes and see it just stand up and open your mouth (laughs) he's like i'm making it easy it's all so fucking absurd isn't it it is are you scared at all Ter. i mean yes and no Mm -hmm. i'm like i'm i'm with stand-up now i kind of i have reached this place just in the last like year or so where i almost don't care what happens anymore to you, you mean? To or me, to the not like safety wise. I just am like with my career. I'm like, what the fuck ever. Yeah. Whatever gonna happens be, is gonna happen. That's how yeah, I feel. We're all gonna be fucking toasted. We're all dying. <laughs> like there's like dead. wars and yeah. famine yeah. and no like gonna pull the, the solar pull. flares and the aliens and no like why do I give a shot? Why do I care if I got just for laughs? Yeah, truly. <laughs> Who gives a shit? That's what have I thought. Have you ever been, have you ever seen these festivals, these networks put? It's fucking five comedy, dead comedy rooms, a fucking salami bar for the comics, and you do a 10 minute set and no one says anything to you. A couple people come up and go, great set, and you never hear from them again. It sucks. Nothing's real. People right. are just putting things together so they feel like they have a worthy life. Yeah. People are overdoing everything so they feel worthy instead of just finding the thing they like. Right. And then they're oversaturating the world with bullshit. Yeah. Because they're scared to be themselves. Well, do you think it's well just said. that people just aren't generating anything creative? People are not authentic. Yeah. That's right. It's the biggest mistake. People say what they think everybody wants them to hear yeah, instead of just true. saying There's how they cowards. feel. They're scared. Yeah, well, but I, I don't yeah. blame them, man. I don't blame you. No, I get it. They'll come for you. (laughs) Is a thing. But I'm like, I'm a glutton for punishment. So I'm like, come for me. I don't know. Can I ask you guys a question? Since you, of course, you're a female stand-up comedian, and you did it. I am. You, yes, you were. Used to be in Mm -hmm. the '80s, and you're doing it now. Mm -hmm. Can can we talk about the differences or the similarities? I would love to know. Oh yeah, I would love to know. I, I mean, for me, people say that it's tough being a woman in comedy. But my personal opinion is, if you're funny, it's a little easier. Yeah. There's not if you're really funny, and because now it's probably different in your day, but now people have the pressure to put women on the lineup, so they have to. Yeah. Yeah. Do so they if do you're that? Funny, are they overt about there. that? Yeah. They people are like, uh, I mean, they I want to see women. Yeah. They want to see women. Yeah. And so yeah. it. It's, so is it easier and Women today? have been scared off. There's not that many of them. They're just like scared to even try stand up. I think. Yeah. And I would think it's easier today as a woman to do to break into comedy. For I would me, it was really easy. Yeah, that's. I cool mean, it was been a long journey, yeah. and and it was like me sleeping on the floor and being broke and crying. Mm-hmm. It's not easy in the sense, but like every comic goes yeah. through that. Yeah, yeah, it's like the same grind that people have for any dream that they have. It's yeah. not yeah. anything special I'm doing. I've just found my talent, and then I worked. Right. I think everyone has their own weird thing. I told my sister, I'm like, if you like fucking gluing seashells to your face, you better get on YouTube yeah. and right. be the funniest seashell gluer do and it just better do than that. Anybody else? Yes, yeah. I'm you like, got just, no excuse anymore. You had no a hard reason. time though. You always talk about it um, in the early '80s when you started as a woman. Like, yeah, it must have been different. There then. weren't really many women doing it. It was you and what Paula Poundstone, basically. No, Paula came way later. Oh, she did. Oh, Who was doing it when you, you started? Uh, well, I started in 1980. Betty Boop. 
<laughs> well, Phyllis I mean, Diller. there already had been Joan Rivers, Phyllis right. Diller. You know, there've been so many, mm-hmm. and of course, the greatest Mae West. Yeah, she mm. busted everybody. But they balls. they did stand up, but the stand up era, but, most people think, um, is like the eighties. You know, you know uh, story. oh my God, I'm gonna forget everybody's name that I should remember. Elaine Boozler. Uh, yeah. There's just a lot of good, good. I mean, Lily Tomlin. There's a lot, you know, Carol Burnett. I just can't remember everybody yeah, great yeah. that I was one of. So maybe but, it uh, wasn't that hard. But uh, Marlo Thomas. But was it hard, I'm asking? Like, did, did you have a hard time breaking in? or? How did you start? Yeah. How did you even start? What was the... Uh... Oh. She's a younger comic. She, give her some... Well... Yeah, it was holy hells on earth. <laughs> it was? It was fucking hells on earth. But I was young and uh, pissed. Yeah. You That'll know, do I, I was pissed because it was right there coming not too far out of the 60s mm-hmm. where I still had marched and my friends and, I mean, we fought and we still believed and we saw... Uh, the whole Vietnam thing, and we still believed. And then, you know, Reagan, and it's like, what the? And then the social safety net gets cut, and we just lived through all of it, you know? Mm-hmm. Did you start? So in 1980, when they put Reagan, I was pretty left. Yeah. And I was like going, oh, Christ, this is a slide, a real slide to... uh uh, real hurt people, like yeah, put not people a on the good street. Thing. Mm-hmm. So I was like, "Fucking, I got to get out there," and I didn't want to. It was crazy. I don't even know where it starts. Who wants to hear any of this shit? I do. Everybody. I'm very curious. Okay, I was understand. at the time. Yeah. I was in this woman's group. You know, it was a cult. the lesbians with the again. lesbians. Yeah. Well, before it was all lesbian. Okay. When it was just basically kind of Jewish and black and, you know, it was just moms of mixed moms, mm-hmm. you know. You already had kids when you started stand-up? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. She had th- three. Four. Well, what? Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah, I was yeah. born in 78. She started in 1980. I was two. That is She was crazy. really a housewife when she was doing that. Like, that, my dad worked at the post office. She was an actual housewife that would go... Saturday night or Friday night and do stand up. How long were Monday. you doing stand up before you got night, the show? That was uh, the show. Well, it was four years till she got the Tonight Show, I believe. No, you tell I'll it. tell the whole thing. I Thank started stand up in 1980. Okay. And uh, then I started doing gigs around the place. And then, like, kind of 85, special. I came to uh, California. Mm hmm. And uh, 86, I got on TV. Six years, okay. And then uh, 88, I got my show. So wow. it was eight years total. Wow. Yeah. From Jump Street to eight, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of it was overnight because once I came to L.A., it was like I was on stage and the Tonight Show guy saw me, put me on. I was on with Julio Iglesias, who... Took me out for 18 weeks to open for him. That got me my sitcom. It was like really? one after the other. It was a God thing, God-given blessing thing. You really have to be like equal parts talented and lucky. Yeah. Well, I think you can adjust your luck and kind of make it favor you by the, like the places you are and the situations you put yourself in. But I've noticed a lot of my breaks, I've been like, I was just here this night. Yeah. I was just here. But if I didn't show up, it wouldn't happen. So it, that is part of the hard work. But just to be the my very first night of stand-up, I popped into the belly room and Tony had just, I just started this show called Kill Tony. It was three episodes in, I think. And then I became a regular on that show. And I'm like, if I didn't even, if I didn't have the weird feeling to go upstairs that I'd, ne- I'd never been up there before. And Your I was first like, stand-up was now. on Kill Tony? My, fir- my very first night of stand-up, I got pulled for potluck at the comedy store in the OR. And I was so hype. I had a great set. It was three minutes. I got like two laughs. And I was like, this is the best. 
That was the best. <laughs> and then someone said, there's another show upstairs if you want to go watch. And it was Kill Tony. And mm. I and then Tony was like, you can actually sign up for it and go up again. So the very first night I did stand up, I went up twice at the comedy store. It was oh, awesome. I'll wow. tell you that story. I went to the comedy store because everybody came to Denver that we had a club there, the comedy shop or works. And uh, they said, you got to go to the comedy store in LA and let Mitzi Shore see you, you know. So, uh, uh, so okay, it was Monday night, amateur night. Everybody told me go. Sam Kennison, Louie Anderson, Alan Steven, everybody who came through Denver, they knew I was coming and they would show up for me, you know, and they mm -hmm. came to see me audition for Mitzi. And uh, I knew they were there and it was cool, my friends, you know. It's and crazy I to think that this was before flyers or computers. Like people were just calling, like Roseanne's coming That's what to I town. Yeah, yeah, it was before. Crazy. Yeah. And uh, it was all word of mouth, you know, comics to comics. And uh, wow. And yeah, I no knew website, it was, just you the know, sign outside the just the store. lights in yeah. the air. And all the comics were there then. Everybody was outside. They all came in, and uh, I knew it. And uh, and I went up, and I knew what it's. It's beyond anything you can ever explain to anybody but i knew it yeah i knew i like blair white said because i knew i was it mm -hmm. i knew i had it i knew i would be it and i knew i am it and it was all there hey guys look it Introducing the Performance Package 5.0 Ultra from Manscaped, the ultimate grooming bundle designed to treat your big hairy balls. <laughs> Look at you get your uh, crop preserver yeah. and your Manscaped crop soother. Yeah. I guess that's like pre-shave and aftershave type thing. Exactly. So you get these two different kind of... Uh, razors for it yeah. i tried shaving my arms with this and it really did work it does work and this one is i don't know that's what's... a nose one. Oh, yeah. this is for your nose this one's good ears. i have this one. that's called the weed for whacker yes i have that's this the one weed whacker 2.0 for your nose for your hair your nose? yeah stick I'm it right in there oh. oh do it you'll hear the sound of the chopping your hair yeah is it weird? put it in yeah, your put ears put it in the mic do it no, yeah. really? you'll hear yeah. it yeah it's satisfying but do it we got to turn it on i'm gonna scare myself Turn it on. No, I'm too scared. Do it, what do a it, do puss, it, do it, do it, do it. Sam, will you do it? I'm what too you, scared. Do it, do it, do oh it. Oh, my God. It sounds good. Oh. <laughs> oh, it's weird. Now, let me no, get that. I want to sell it on it's eBay. It's like a shop. You want your guy to be uh, groomed, right? You mm -hmm. have to do it. Christ, you have to get your nails done, your butt Waxed. Wax, wax, yeah. and all that other crap. Not that I do. That's why I'm man free. Yeah, I, you shave I your butt. I, I don't give a shit. But you know, for you people who have sex for some reason and want to be attractive to each other, that's what you got to do. It's twenty percent off with free shipping at Manscaped.com and use the code Roseanne. His balls will be singing, "Baby, it's cold outside." I don't even know who wrote. That isn't even funny. It's not. That's <laughs> Every single thing I worked for, and uh, every fucking joke killed, every fucking joke. All five minutes of it was gold, and I had worked so hard and picked them five fucking minutes so tight and went through so much to do it, rewriting all mm -hmm. night, all the shit, you know? And then she goes, go do 20 in the big room. <gasps> and I go, oh, Christ, I was a speechless and all the waitresses go, she's never did that before, ever took anybody from audition to the main stage. Wow. And That's pretty incredible. I was going, fuck. I go, I don't even know if I have 20 clean. I was like, I don't even know if I have 20 fucking clean minutes. I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to bullshit my way through four minutes because that's all the filth. <laughs> that I don't want uh, her to see because when I get into the, my butt fucking jokes and shit, I can't do that. <laughs> you to have to her. hide the butt fuck jokes, by <laughs> the way. On the first twenty, like not on the fucking. first date with you, Mitzi. You got to work <laughs> you in the butt, save the butt fucks for the third set. And then I came off the stage it. and she goes, "I'm opening a place in Vegas and you have work." That, that was my first. What night. twenty minutes did you do that you did? Wow. Did you you didn't have twenty minutes? I did. I had forty, oh, but oh. I was 
a lot of it was dirty. That's... I was just trying to reorganize all my shit 20 clean, you know. You know how you think. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm not going to get up there. And... Oh, every time I'm about to do a set, I'm like, I don't even know if I have one minute. <laughs> this thought comes in my head. I'm like, who knows if this is even. I feel like I made up how to write jokes. I was like, this is how you do it. And I guess. <laughs> And everyone laughed, and I've been, like, faking it this whole time, and it keeps working. I don't know why. Sometimes I feel that way, too. Yeah, I do it, and I'm like, okay. And then they all laugh, and I kind of have this feeling where I go, okay, like, if you believe it, I'll believe it. Because I'm like, I almost feel like I'm past my own jokes. Like, I hear my jokes, and I and I already had that thought and opinion, and I'm so over it. Yeah. I go, oh, Christ, I've heard this one a hundred uh, times. Not this shit again. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> yeah, you're just listening to what's coming out. I watched David tell have that feeling one time at the cellar and I'll never forget it because I know exactly it felt he was just crushing in the cellar and he you could tell he was a perfected set he's done a million yeah. times and he said a joke and everyone laughed and he went <laughs> like <laughs> I was like that is the best I feel that when they laugh and you're like yeah okay fine how do you feel about the special you did I feel great I feel well. I've also it's the it's actually the first thing in stand up that I've ever felt ready for. Wow, cool! In eleven years, I've never felt ready. I've done things and I've been nervous. And the day of the taping, I was so calm. My set was ready. I ran it a hundred thousand times before in different ways. I would sit on the stool, stand up, mm -hmm. wore a jacket, make myself be cold. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I put myself in every. I got too high one time. I got drunk and did mm -hmm. it. Yeah, I put yeah. myself in any uncomfortable situation uh -huh. to see if I could run this set. You're actually the reason uh, I have really bad ADD and... <laughs> And I stopped chewing gum in the beginning of stand up. Someone said it was unprofessional. And then I watched your special and yeah, you were chewing gum, chew gum. And I put gum right in back in my mouth and it helped my set so much mm. just to it not does. The timing. to think and the timing and to slow you down. You don't want to yeah, spit yeah, the gum yeah, out, yeah. it mm -hmm. slows you down. Yeah. Mm. It's great. It is great. Yeah, and someone's like, you should never do it. And I remember probably like a year later, I was watching you. I was like, Roseanne does it. I'm doing it. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> it keeps, it is that OCD thing because you just want to go chop, 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 mm -hmm. And you, you get nervous. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. There's a rhythm to it too, huh? It's yeah. a godly rhythm to it when you got the right thing to say. And it goes like, it's like music. Because I've talked to a lot of musicians, you know, mm -hmm. and it's like, but up, but up, but the joke, mm -hmm. the way it, and the poetry of it. Oh, I was, I was doing the test, the camera test for my special, and they're like, go through the thing, but I didn't want to do my set. Yeah. So I was going, a da da da, a da, da 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 da, and they're like, it's crazy how you're not saying words, but it sounds like a set. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, because it's like a, it's a sound you make. Katie. Yeah. It's about the sound. They need to hear the sounds. They're like babies. Is it harder? Can I ask you a question? Is it? Is it harder or is it, how hard is it to break into comedy now with, with the woke culture? I saw a, a thing you did on, on stage, which I loved when you're basically like, what is wrong with you? You pay the ticket, you come to a stand up set and you get offended. Mm -hmm. Like there's something fucking wrong with you. This is a comedy club. You know what we're doing. Yeah. Do you put up with that a lot? The woke thing or is that, cause I know my mother deals with that mm -hmm. obviously. Yeah. Oh, um, I just get even more dirty. Cause I like the thing I think is. Well, they you're just not being dirty enough for them. Yeah. No, I double down too. Yeah, to. <laughs> I'm like, well, they're getting the worst stuff. Yeah. They're getting the worst stuff because they need like the break. They need to break or yeah. hear the worst so that maybe when they hear something less bad, they're like, that's not that bad. I'll do my worst shit. And if it's a bad crowd, I'll do my most offensive shit up top. And then after the last joke, I go, all right, well, that was my clean stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and then it loosens them up for the the easier stuff. But, but I, don't, I don't care. No, no I don't care. I truly either, do not what's care. What's wrong with them? They Why already they go, that's, is it just judging? No, but they'll try and ruin your career. There's people no. that go to restaurants, they pay money, and then they hate every time they eat yeah. the food. There's just people the that are juice. unhappy no matter what they do. Yeah. They're paying their own money, and they're just pissed. But it's like... I really don't care. I I do stand up. I don't do stand up for anybody else. I don't yeah. do it for the audience. I don't do it. I I, I guess like uh, now it's become I people feel better when they listen to my jokes and it is a good thing for the world. But I just do it because when I do it, I feel happy yeah. and I feel like if everyone focused yeah. on that on themselves, if everyone was a little more selfish. And really was like, I'm going to make myself happy for six months. I think that's a good point. That's a really good point. Yeah. It's like we almost are like too giving to where we've become fake. Yeah. And it's really me and Alex, me and my friend Alex Scarlato, the, my friend that's a producer, we keep talking about the most important thing to do is be authentic. 
it's better for the world always it's better for you that's for it's sure. better for you and and being better for you is better for the world well trying to fix yourself and get better mm-hmm. trying to make yourself get better or do better mm-hmm. you know fix your broken places instead of like going out and looking at other people's broken shit yeah that is the hardest thing in the world to do if people if we would ever talk about the truth about that is that's the hardest thing nobody can do that Mm -mm. that's only like two percent of people can even do that i know because it's so hard but that's why you got to try to do it yeah but if you're if you're constantly trying to fix yourself you're too distracted to be an asshole yeah. You're all too busy working on yourself. Even if you'll never get it, the whole point is to work on yourself so you're not a dick everywhere else. Yeah. I'm right? too busy. Yeah. Yeah. I'm literally too busy. Ten years ago, I was having fights with comedians all the time. I'd bicker with them. If they said something on social media I didn't like, I would comment like, this is dumb. You know what I mean? Like, I would. Yeah. I'd snap back. Even if someone had a, a, a opinion that I thought was insane or they were saying something inappropriate, I'd be like, what the fuck? Right. And now I'm like, I am so busy. I just don't care. Yeah. You have to just not care. As Did much. you ever get in any fist fights? Um, <laughs> yes. Well, I got. Cool. I've been in um, a <laughs> couple in college. Rican, yeah. I when I was eighteen years old, I was in college and I went to Panama City to the beach for spring break, and I was at a concert and I met this guy and we were both drunk, and it was at the beach at a concert. He put me on his shoulders. And we were just dancing on his shoulders. I was like, this is fun. And then I guess he had a girlfriend there. Uh-oh. And oh, she came up. Bitch on bitch crime. Yeah. And she <laughs> took a Coors Light can oh. and she chucked me in the face with it. And <gasps> oh, I was out God. of nowhere. I thought he was single. He just picked me up. I was like, I didn't know. Oh, and she chucked me. And then he took me, grabbed me by the ass and threw me on top of her. And so it created like a fight. Like he kind of made it happen. Oh, wow. So it was just a fight. Like a wrestling and, move. Oh my yeah. God. And the crazy thing is that was six hours away from my college, that trip I went on. And me and that girl got broken up and separated. And I got like one look into her eyes before we got separated. And two weeks later, when I was back at school, I went to a bar and I saw her standing outside the bathroom door, the same girl. And I did just sucker punch her. Wow. (laughs) Right. Yeah. Right in the face. (laughs) That's what she did to me. And then, and yeah, I sucker punched her. We got separated at the bar. And then two days later, she found my social media and she messaged me and she said, can we never do that again? Oh, wow. And I said, yeah, we're good. Better than a lawsuit. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Y'all solved your, yeah. that's good. It was solved. Yeah, but I had to get my lick back. <laughs> you do, absolutely. Yeah, you do. I love it when women get in a fist fight with other women. It's yeah. so much cleaner and better than the mental war women put other women through trying to ruin your credit and get your kids took away. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> all that shit. That is a woman thing to call yeah, CPS on another bitch woman. On bitch oh, yeah. Women are way it's worse. Horrible. Bitch on bitch crime don't it's play. Horrible. Yeah. I just go punch a bitch out and then she, and then she'll get you that's back how men and fight. that's it. Yeah. Period. Yeah. That's it's how over. Men are. Punch One each other time and it's over. I was dating a, a male comedian about 10 years ago and we got into a fight at the comedy store like an argument he was making fun of my friends or something oh no my friends made fun of his set and he was just like being (gasps) really they like were like that joke was like interesting and he was like you don't fucking know anything fuck you and it was being really Uh, shitty and and i was kind of stood up for them and he poked me like he was like at the comedy store and he was trying to be like don't you ever and did this and was like backing me up he was doing Uh-oh. it so hard and I punched him in the face squared oh, in the yeah, eye you need to. at the comedy oh, store you need to. and I remember the moment I did it, I was like three years in I was like I'll never be allowed in this place again and the way that I just keep going in there they don't <laughs> the, before they got cameras in there it was the why you know you yeah. know you got you guys oh, said they, it off. before they had the cameras Oh, they had the guns and the knives. I saw the guns and oh, the knives. Oh, shit. I saw, the, I saw worse Didn't than guns and knives. Didn't you smash a guy's head on a bar, I heard? Machine oh, guys. they did all kinds of No, you shit. did that. I heard <laughs> you grabbed a guy's head. And... Oh, that was in Vegas. I hit. I smashed a guy's head in the Why did you do that? Because he's saying shit I didn't want to hear. So you Hell grabbed yeah. the back of his head and smashed him on the bar? I heard this from Alan. Were you chewing gum? Do you trust anything that's uh, being parroted out of the mouth of so-called experts on the TV? No. When I hear trust the experts, I know they're lying. After the last three years, I, I just don't trust anybody. Me either. Uh, that's why I'm, kind, I'm very excited to introduce you guys to the Wellness Company and specifically their medical emergency kit. The kit, is it has eight potentially life-saving medications so you can feel safer. It comes with meds, 
like um, what? Amoxicillin is one. Amoxicillin, you read those, Jake. Ivermectin. Oh, yeah, that's the big one. Z pack. That's the horse paste. Z pack. Mm -hmm. uh, and it also has a 22 page guidebook, which is basically like having a doctor on call. Yeah. You don't have you don't have to go on WebMD yeah. and see that you have cancer. They scare the shit out of you. This yeah. just... But it's everything from tick bites to yep. COVID, yep. natural disasters to supply chain shortages, because that's a big one supply chain shortages. Yep. Yeah, they got it covered. Everything's covered. Go to twc. Help forward slash rb and use the code rb and you'll save ten percent at checkout. Mm -hmm. That's twc. Help forward slash rb and use the promo code rb for ten percent off. Listen to this. I know you won't give a shit, but Biden's new budget proposes four point seven trillion dollars that's t trillion 4.7 trillion dollars in new taxes <laughs> trillion what is that like that's a billion billion or three times a billion billion it's a thousand billion good lord um, for those with retirement accounts they're offering Roseanne podcast listeners and supporters up to $10,000 in free silver when you open a qualified IRA account. And for cash buyers, you're going to love this. You can get a bonus silver just for making the purchase. So like, okay, if you're, if you're going to buy $15,000 worth of precious metals, you'll get $750 in bonus silver. That's pretty cool. That's free. I have ever heard of that, but that's pretty cool. Anyway, they've created yeah. a page for you. Yeah, it, it's called rblikesgold.com. Yes. That's me. rblikesgold.com. You've got your own landing page. So this, that's cool. So you so go you there. find out more and just fill out the form. Yeah, protect your wealth. That's what it's about. It's not an investment. I don't tell people to buy gold and silver because like, oh, you're going to make billions of dollars. It's not that. It's not Bitcoin where it's bullshit thing that's going to collapse. It's just it's protecting It's a real money. Jew it's, selling real gold. It's, this, is, like, this is what you do when you're a Jew is you sell gold. This is what God has asked us to do. That's why we're chosen. But really, it's about protecting what you have. No, I, was, <laughs> I had really removed cool. my gum because I was drinking. <laughs> and uh, he came up and said some nasty shit to me. Like, you know, uh, I guess they some guys, some guy comics think talking nasty is a turn on i guess well they, yeah i hate when guy comics talk in general <laughs> i do <laughs> too like, in in person yeah i like when they're on stage me too they're horrendous in person yeah they're yeah. all kind of crazy crazy but they're not crazy like women comics who do you think's crazier women comics or men comics that's a good question I honestly, and this is not even me hating on men, I think it's the men. I do too. Like I do too. Men, you made a good point. We, I think we've talked about this. And men, we're both crazy, but the men are degenerates. Yeah. yeah. They're they degenerates are. on top of the shit. You were right about Hanging that. Hanging their self and jacking off and all that kind oh of crazy God. shit. They're so, <laughs> what the fuck? They're also so horny. I think they <laughs> asked... Uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> I think they asked Pamela Anderson one time, would you rather date a rock star or a comedian? And she said a rock star. She yeah. said comedians are too hard to deal with. Yeah. They are. They're crazy. Poor guys. They got a... I don't know. They got too many things going on there. Too many wires are... But also, at the same time, how... how um, Don't you feel like you're on like an island of misfit toys and you belong in the toy box? <laughs> I know that I'm a misfit too. Yeah. But I don't think two misfits should ever get together. Yeah. That's my whole thing. If you're a girl comic, don't get with the boy comic. Yeah. There's my head. It's hard not my to. Final, it's so hard not to. Yeah, give Kim some but advice. You, you just the block. can't. You've got to get with a mental health professional. Yeah, <laughs> you should. <laughs> that is my advice. Do you know? Well, do you, well, it's hard because we deserve to laugh too. I know, but then but that kind comics of comics aren't the only people that are that. funny. Well, if you can, I'll tell you yeah. what. A writer would be good. No. A comedic You'd writer? I think so. Oh. You need like but a, remember that a Hollywood lawyer. Boulevard movie 
where the writers drown in her pool, my favorite movie. No. Yeah, she uses the writers and then drowns them in her pool. <laughs> <laughs> Look how excited you are. <laughs> you know, I movie. kind of expected when I walked into your house that you'd have like young naked men that we'd sit on as furniture. Like <laughs> you'd have like this. Mom doesn't really like men or sex anymore. <laughs> I don't really. I'm so over the goat urge. Yeah, she really? thinks she thinks people have sex or like retarded i look down on them yeah, she does. really yeah. yeah i'm like why would you i mean but i'm 71 and yeah so i'm kids. bored i've done it i've it's nothing yeah she's not on hormones well i also think you know what really freaks me out have you ever met someone that's over like too sexual yeah they're it's scary creepazoid. yeah they're oh. scary one time oh. we went all into the strip club in texas after like one of the shows uh-huh and it was fun and I enjoy it. And like, you know, some of the girls are cute and fun and mm -hmm. whatever. But there was I'll this one stripper whore. that was like just so aggressively horny in her section. And she kept like, I was just like, please, like I can feel your molestation energy. Yeah, yeah. It's just like creepy. It's creepy. To you? To me. Uh -huh. I don't like over sexual energy. I'm, if I have a boyfriend, I don't like PDA. Yeah. I also have like... <laughs> I don't like PDA at all. I'll sit on a lap maybe and do a kiss every once in a while, but I'm like not into like making out in public and stuff like that. I also like when as a child, my mom used embarrassment as punishment, which is very oh, interesting no. what? that I became a comedian. How would she do that? Like she would punish me by like, showing up to my school and like that's what you would you know that. yeah, yeah showing up, throwing my clothes like in the middle of the street oh, and, I didn't do that and or like in front uh, of the other kids from yeah i remember one time when i was 15 i threatened to kill myself well that's rough yeah and my mom brought all over the neighborhood guys and the one i had a crush on and wow. like brought him into my room i was like tell him how you said you're gonna kill yourself wow and so she would like embarrass did me did she want you to kill yourself or something no i no that should have pushed me to the edge Seriously? to be honest yeah. Yeah. but it honestly made Made me never threaten it again it kind of worked i was like oh that was embarrassing wow. but now i have a that kind of is might be calling your bluff to the nth degree there it is but that's it a is. risky maneuver because that could go the other way yeah. it could have and yeah. i should have punished her and just off that's myself you, should, you but have to keep escalating. yeah but I that would have showed her <laughs> she, yeah she's Try lucky again, i'm not bitch. a little more yeah so she's a sociopath that yeah sounds pretty yeah fucked up. so so i get very embarrassed which is so crazy that i'm a comedian because i get humiliated me too by but anything then you'll get up there on stage maybe and that's do part that. of it because mm -hmm. we're it all you're mentally ill that. i've i've wondered that your dad mm -hmm. did that grandpa jerry was would hum humiliate us he would do that to me too it was hilarious oh Remember my he'd put god his teeth my in my dad. hand and shit <laughs> oh my dad there's no he would embarrass like you dad. horribly maybe maybe mm -hmm. that's what it is that makes people comics is a like a parent that's uh, you know, abuses you that way. Well, you want to, you kind of, well, we don't want to get too psychiatric. I like to get, I like but, to get into that Well, stuff. you kind of want to make your vo your vulnerabilities seen so they mm. don't find them on their own. Oh, that's Ooh. smart. But Ooh. then you got other ones behind them ones. Oh, my God. So you just put the ones out that you think is a... And you hide the good ones. That's yeah, really you hide the real ones. You that's hide the deep. good stuff. It's like you a lightning rod. Ones. Huh? You're like using it like a lightning rod. Yeah, because you know that they'll laugh at themselves that way. Right. But there's other things behind it that are, you know, that's where the real jokes come from. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I so always I always loved that. Um, someone told me that Mitzi used to say, like, when you go on stage, don't tell a joke, tell the truth. Hmm. Yeah, she did say that. And it's one of my favorite things. And that's like the authenticity thing again. It makes for the funny. You ever see a comic go on stage and they're just trying to be funny? Did yeah. you know her? Did you ever meet her? <gasps> no, she's gone. It's like the saddest thing of my life. That Here's I what she her. told me. No Puerto uh, Ricans. <laughs> no. no, she loved everybody. Oh, okay. She, she, she'd, play, she'd tell you to play up your identity. She'd probably say like, they... They've never seen a Puerto Rican sexy gal. She'd, <laughs> okay. tell, she'd tell you to play it up, you know. I love it. But uh, she told me, yeah, you're, I'm, I don't know why I'm doing the voice. Because <laughs> I whine just as much. No, as, you're channeling her. I'm channeling her. She goes, you're kind of like a farmer. That's why you need to wear overalls and stuff. Like it's your Midwestern farmer. Yeah, that's your... I think she was right. I'm not gonna, I'm right not gonna lie to you. It's a good the note. first four years of my stand up, I also wore overalls because I was obsessed with you. Aww, really? So I cute. wore overalls and chew gum because I, I just thought you were the coolest. Yes. See, overalls like are the shit. They're the I, shit. They're so comfortable. They're and cool. making uh, 
what do they call them? Jumpsuits. They're making a huge comeback. The mm-hmm. romper. Yeah. They're the best stand up outfits for women, I think. I'm like, uh-huh. I always say, like, overalls are cute and they cover everything mm-hmm. and you're comfortable in them. Mm-hmm. But you yeah. look so chic. I know. This is, I'm trying like a new thing because I'm trying to like get, find a husband, but and you I'm don't try, want. I look hun- like a lesbian most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you don't want. You, you just, you know, it's so... I want one. I'm so sick of, like, carrying my own shit. Yeah. I well, want someone to just assistant. hire a, get a male assistant. assistant. Get a gay I one. I will when I can afford one in a year. Yeah. Well, they'll work for free if they think you're going somewhere. That's true. You should leverage that. That's true. That's a good point. Who? A guy. A gay guy will do it. Yeah, then you have to pay a gay guy. A straight guy. <laughs> you do like have to secret. pay a gay yeah, guy. Yeah, a straight so guy true. that's got a crush on you, you could get a free year out of him. Easy. If he's rich, he'll work for free. If he has a crush mm. on you. You'll be fine. Oh, my God. If I would tell you the kind of shit women used to do. What? But I don't know if they do it anymore. What? Like, well, let's what? find out. Yeah, that's I might do here. it. <laughs> is yeah, it? Help her out. No, I think women have changed a lot. I've seen the change in women. Like what? Particularly through women comics. Um, just women have a way to make uh, their own way in the world now. and they That was kind of rare. Like OnlyFans? <laughs> yeah Feet it picks. is kind of that yeah what do you think about that what's your opinions on only fans and women doing like sex work like that well i think that's a, you know like a, a fast way out it is so you know if you got you if might you're as, in a pinch yeah if you're in you might as well not be you know let me you know that song uh might, might as well sell it instead of just sitting on it Oh my god, I've never heard that. That's from the fifties. Instead of sitting on it, is a it's well a visceral it. image. <laughs> might as well sell it and said you're sitting on it. Damn. You know, if you need a way out. But yeah. are you talking Unfortunately, about? Unfortunately, oh. you know these women they're going to college and getting five degrees in this and that, and they can't make a living anyway because they're getting stupid bullshit degrees they're not getting real degrees yeah no no i say don't go to college unless you need a degree for your job like really look into your job and ask yourself are they going to look up if i have a degree and if it's a no quit yeah Yeah. make the connection go for a few semesters make some connections meet some lawyer sons and some people that are doctors and in college the only benefit i dropped out of college my senior year to do stand-up i i came to la for the summer off an internship, popped in, did the OR, and then did Kill Tony. And the next day, I dropped out of school. I completely Good. dropped out. And the only Good thing for you. that benefited me was the connections I made. The, That's why you The go. three years. The yeah. friends I had. I had doctors. I had lawyers. Yeah. I knew people from around the country. I can go to 10 different states now and have somewhere to stay. That's all good and well, but you don't really need a degree for stand up for no. no anything. I think my advice to young women: drop out of college, learn how to do stand up comedy, or become a pool, a really good pool player. Because <laughs> women do have a thing with seeing angles on a board, I love pool. and they should. Women are good pool players, mm-hmm. and I think those two things are are really good. Stand up and pool. Those are, two, are two. good far better than going to college i agree with that college is a waste. and learning to go get a craft or not a craft but i mean like a skill plum, being a skill yeah. yeah plumbers women are going to do that elect electricians those people work forever they no, always I know. have a job those are things women need to do labor welding. jobs welding yeah yeah, there's a lot of really good jobs out there that women can make a lot of money on. I, one of them is construction management. Mm-hmm. You don't even have to be on the site. You show up and make sure everyone's working, and then you make a bunch of money. Yeah, I was trying to get my sister to do that, but yeah, I love pool. I love poker. Poker's I love good. To gamble. Women have the mind for gambling. So I have this. I wanted to do this thing. I've been trying to teach my sister how to play poker because I'm like, when I go, I go to the casino sometimes, Commerce or. Um, the other one over here at Hollywood Park. Yeah. And um, I'm going there tomorrow. I, I used to wear sweatpants and a sweatshirt and dress like a boy, glasses, ponytail. And I'd play and it'd be fun. The last time I went, I was like, let me try dressing sexy. Mm-hmm. So I went full cleavage out. And I'm telling you, it I worked. must have gotten $200 worth of free money. Yeah. If I lost a thing and I'd be like, well, I got to go. The guys would be like, no, stay. And yeah. they'd throw chips. Say. And I told my sister, I'm like, why don't we... The place is open all night. They so open 24-7. I'm like, why don't we go to bed at 10, 5 o'clock, wake up at midnight, mm-hmm. dress up like we've been partying all night, mess up our hair, but Act like drunk. we're fresh brain, yeah. and then go wipe out the table of dudes that have been Brilliant. there for eight hours. Yeah. 
They'd of be tired. Course, They're ready now to go you're home. Thinking. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. we should do that. That's smart. You want to join me? I would go. I would <laughs> go. go. Yeah, I would go uh, because why not? Mm-hmm. And give them a thrill. Give them a. Th- they'll pay to have a little entertainment. They're bored and they're surrounded by other men. They're like dying to have some feminine energy after a few hours. Men I'm miss women. Point. It doesn't matter I how badly so. they treat us. When we're gone yeah. and we come around, you can tell they miss you. It's true. And I'm telling yeah. you what, they miss, uh, you know, men miss uh, a broad, it used to be called. Yeah. You know, like Mae West type with the jokes. Yes. Cool chicks. They do, yeah, cool chicks or mm-hmm. whatever. They miss the jokes. See, but they're forced to be in the room with the lesbians. And hence, <laughs> yep. they're like laugh shamed by the lesbians who are anti humor. You mm. see where I'm going with this? Yeah. You're in a yeah, very yeah. anti lesbian. Yeah. You should make merch that says lesbians killed comedy. Yeah. <laughs> they did. <laughs> they did. They and did. you know how all the, all the uh, publicists in Hollywood are lesbians? I thought they were gay guys. No, they used to be gay guys, but. Now they're not. Gay guys are running the organizations. But all the publicists are lesbians now, which is why you're not able to say anything without fucking pissing somebody off and, you know, being called out for it. Yeah, I agree with you. For me, it's like less lesbian, but I call them in L.A. I hate when I'm driving, I see them. I call them white night cucks. Yeah, that's perfect. It's L.A. white night cucks. It's people that are like just fucking, they get off on being righteous. Like it makes, they're missing something internally and they didn't get some sort of validation. So they just want to side with whatever the bigger number is. Yeah. And when I was driving, oh my gosh, this really happened to me. I was driving. I rarely. Isn't it a self righteous? It's self righteous. It's Wait, actually wanna, more selfish than I wanna, not. I want to hear the story. You're driving. I was driving. I was, and and I've noticed this because L. A. You could tell the the temperament and um, how like woke and rule following the city is by yeah. the traffic. Yeah. If you're driving in L. A. And I want you to notice this next time. The yeah. right lanes will always be open. Always. Uh It'll be miles of traffic and the right lane is open because the people are scared to when you're illegally allowed to, to go in and merge back in away from the cars. And the whole town is so scared to have to get in front of someone because that's what they are. We shouldn't get in front of others. And I'm like, you're actually creating more traffic by staying in this lane than just being cool and going with the flow. And I feel like that is kind of the whole thing. Yeah. You're looking at like an anthropologist through traffic. Yeah. Fascinating. I never thought of that because I... I remember being like driving when I was younger was much more aggressive, and I've noticed that too. People are much and they're more causing positive. more traffic. No, the more hesitant. careful they are, yeah. it's like people that get mad when you when you go like you're going to go on the exit and merge back in. Yeah. Those people get so mad at you. Oh. But if you look up the statistics, that's actually ma- helps flow traffic better than people that don't do that. And it's like, why are you mad at me for just going quicker than you? Yeah. Why are no, you I- mad that I'm quicker than you? Yeah. You're mad at yourself because you were too scared to do that. Yeah. You're not mad at me. You're mad at you. Yeah. And then if you're like one second over the time limit when the light changes, oh. they can't wait. They no. live for it. Oh, the rule happened. You're breaking the rules. I hate it. I was driving. There was me, me driving, it. a guy in front of me, no traffic behind me. And the guy in front of me, I see there's, you know, those prisoners that work on the side of the roads. Yeah. They're working on the side of the road and they're trying to cross the street. But I can see that they're waiting for me and this guy to pass so that they there's no traffic behind us. They can cross the guy in front of me because he's a white knight cuck slams <laughs> on slams on his brakes to let these people go by because he has to be righteous. Mm-hmm. He has to be the person that lets them go because they're prisoner. I already know. I see the fucking stickers on the car. Mm-hmm. I already know who he is. Right. C- the coexist. I see it. Yeah, I hate those fucks. I hate those And fucks. so he slams on his brakes. I almost hit him. And then... I th- wish you had. Yeah, I wish I had too and all the prisoners after this because <laughs> I, I slam on the brakes and... Then he's going like this to the prisoners and they're going like, no, you go. We're waiting for the cars to go by. And he's going, you go. So then I fucking honk and I roll down my window. I go, one of you fucking go. Yeah, good. And then the dude, <laughs> th- th- then they all turn on me. They oh, all turn on me. To, now they're working together and they're like, fuck you. And I go to go around the driver and he blocks me. Wow. So now he's being aggressive. So I wait. The prisoners go. They're laughing. And that guy comes up to the window and he rolls down the window and he's like, have a heart. Oh, fuck Have you. a heart. Oh, and I just went, you're a cock. <laughs> I was like so angry. But it's like 
It's actually not about having a heart because in my heart, I was going to go so they could cross the street yeah. easier. But I didn't have the need to need validations from the prisoners that I did something for them. You did. Right. right. And it's like that that I hate. I hate that I shit. I hate oh, it. It's it so fake. You're it's disgusting. that pretend shit. I used to, I want, used to wanted to do a thing where you showed uh, the, because I hate Hollywood and all. Once I got in there, it mm -hmm. was like, yeah, oh, God. But uh, I wanted to show where the one thing they will um, support their charity. I want to have a graph that this is the charity they support, uh, and this is the sin they actually commit. <laughs> and here's the graph where they meet. That's what it is. They're That's how it. I saw it. That's how it is. It is like that. It's dark. It is really dark. It's really dark. But comedy is the light of it all, you it know, is. and those are the only movies that makes any money for the rest of their shit. You know, the comedies and that's what they're they're just ruining comedy. And that just incenses me. That's what but I we'll get about. it back some other way. Well, comedy, you guys are fighting the younger comics. I've noticed you like kill Tony or yeah. the mothership. Like that's one of the things but I I'm talking about. about movies. No, I know. Mm -hmm. But yeah, there's, yeah. A, there's a movement now to yeah. to, to push back. Oh, my God. I just wrote the most offensive, funny movie. Oh, my God. I want to read it. Oh, I'm so excited about it. I'll, I I feel like it's not bad to say your ideas out loud, is it? It's very bad. Or, you should do an NDA. Well, sort of, because someone will someone steal, steal it. Even if it's already written? Is yeah, it trademarked? No. No, don't do Trademark it. Trademark it. Mm. And then, see, because they're Mail like this, yourself. everything you're saying. Mm. Tell oh us off, off air. Yeah. Or you can write it, Trademark mail it. it to yourself, certified mail, and don't yeah. open it. Yeah, I wrote a movie about cancel culture. I love it. Oh, I love it. I yeah. want to make it. Yeah, can we make yeah. it? Yeah. I want to make it. No, it's not done. It's just fully written out. Me and my uh, my, my uh, podcast partner, Sarah Weinshank, we wrote it Well, together. can I read it? Yes. And can I put notes on it? Absolutely. You she know I'll notes. put some fucking notes on yes, it. Yes, yes. And I if it gets know... made, can you be in it? <laughs> of course. Well, you're yes. the queen of cancel culture. Yeah. You're the only I, one that actually I'm got canceled. I'm the queen of skank cancel culture. <laughs> I'm the skankiest skank and cancel skank. <laughs> well, I, that's the thing I always want to say is like, you know, I'm glad comics are stepping up now and fighting back. But <clears throat> when she was time. going through that, no one said shit. And that's why I'm still pissed. Like what? nobody backed you up when you were going through your cancel. Mm -hmm. not comics were pussies, and now they're not all going out there and like, look at me. I'm not not that you did this, yeah. but other ones are like, I'm anti cancel culture. It's like, where the fuck were you four yeah. or five years you ago? Say shit about that's me. why I'm I get like, mad. I'm not yeah. gonna name names, but yeah, that's yeah. why I'm mad. No, I know what you mean. Yeah, and truly. I'm glad that you're authentic about it. Yeah, no, I would have, but I just. I don't, I don't tweet like that. Yeah. <laughs> I post and ghost. I'm in and out. But I'm like, you know, uh, bitch, you weren't there. Yeah. So I'm like, for whatever the fuck I got to tell you, every time I heard. From now on, I just go, bitch, you wasn't there. I'll say that for everybody. And that goes way back because people used to, here's how it was. One thing, when I, when I was doing my act, people used to come up to me and go, women they're scared to say at it out loud parties i love what you're doing yeah but i don't think they do that no more mm -mm. do they mm -mm. but that's i used to hear that and i'd be like what a freak show <laughs> and then i'd go to the midwest you know everybody's like in iowa i mean i love iowa because i was thin there <laughs> oh yeah and they're all like fuck yeah let's go <laughs> you're telling the truth yeah. Fuck them. Mm -hmm. yeah. They're big, strong women, but out out in Hollywood. I love what you're saying. They're scared. Yeah. They're scared. scared they're scared of truthful. They're scared of real women. Yeah. Ain't they? Yeah. We're scary. We're powerful. We're Rare. some scary. Fucking, <laughs> we're scary as fuck. We're scary Dude, as fuck. if I watched a woman, if I didn't know what giving birth was and I watched a woman give birth, I'd be like, that's a demon. That's a demon. <laughs> like, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy that that happened. Or if I didn't know what that was, like the fact women are insane. They are. In a good way. Yeah. You Not don't always. ever want to, you don't ever want to go through that if you get the choice of whether to do that or not mm -hmm. don't really no well, do you want is have it kids? not worth it to be i definitely want to have okay. kids i don't know if i want to be pregnant it kind of grosses mm -hmm. me out yeah. the yeah. whole process it's really you, you gotta be pregnant though because you saw like was it chloe kardashian that did the surrogate she didn't mm -hmm. have a bond with the baby they at don't. first yeah maybe ever you gotta 
I mean, that's just I'm, a lot I'm a of people don't thing. bond with the kid they have. Well, too. They don't have they kids. They throw it against the wall and kill it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's Let's a good take point. the mystery out of the shit. <clears throat> it's true. <laughs> people are fucking psychotic. You have to want to do it. Yeah. Some yeah. people make good parents, and yeah. some people they just you know what does it matter? We're all gonna be dead soon. We're all gonna be fucking dead, <laughs> dead soon. <laughs> dead as a fucking new, door new knob. Dead. No one's gonna care. How's it gonna happen? What What do you put? 20 years or less? Oh, God. I think less. Yeah. I think we've got f- six hours. <laughs> we got to make that movie. Yeah. We got to get do. on that movie. We got to piss people off before that. we go. <laughs> Let's fucking drop a big fucking <laughs> nugget. Yeah. I want to go out in a fit of rage. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a great. What's the most rage rage filled thing you could say in, in to end this psyop we've been? perpetrating on humanity this hour um <laughs> conjoined twins were the original they thems mm. <laughs> i think you're right that yeah they're the <laughs> they're, they're the first ones they're the it's their ones. thing they're yeah. the they thems <laughs> and it should only be they them there's two of them yeah <laughs> <laughs> you didn't see when we were little Oh, but in Utah, you know, that wasn't that unusual. Because the, the conjoined twin thing in Salt Lake City. Why? We, it was so every day. Ew, like, what do you mean you saw conjoined twins every day? All the time in Salt Lake. Ew, in Salt okay. Lake. They all do. the time. I got to tell you how unhinged it is that you both are casually telling me that there's an I can't you don't overconsumption know of conjoined twins in Salt Lake City. What the <laughs> fuck is happening with I the Mormons? Up. They're inbreeding. I grew up. They, no, I don't know what, what well, they do marry their cousins. There's 40 like of the them Jews. in the desert 100 years ago now. There's millions. You don't get there without fucking your sister. Well, it's the same dad. and It's yeah. ancestry that gets them conjoined? Well, I'm just telling you what I there's saw. A lot of, <laughs> there there's a lot of There was the Nelson conjoined yeah. twins when I grew oh. up, and, and they were joined at the head. Yeah. See, a lot of them, another pair of them was uh, conjoined at the chest, so they couldn't separate them because there was only one heart between them. Yeah. So in order to separate them, they had to like actually kill, kill one. one of yeah. them. So they just let them live that way, and they got along fine, you know? They have to. Yeah. I know. They didn't have any problems. And Jesus. they live to be like tw- in their 20s. They shouldn't. We need um, some conjoined twin stand ups. Couple I know. Ones. That would that would definitely be. They have two mics the and next they're connected level. backwards at the head. And then they could have different faces when they come yeah. around. He said, she said. One says the setup. <laughs> the other one does the punchline. That'd be great. That would really, really. That, that could, would get me. Everyone that, could be all scared. That could go on America's Got Talent. Yeah. Simon Cowell would nut at seeing that. That would be a big deal. Yeah. If that would ever happen. We could probably make it happen. But that would be offensive and it would be wrong. It would be hilarious. It would be funny. Oh, man. I think the most offensive thing I could say was is uh, maybe we won't. Maybe we we won't get lucky and die. Yeah, uh, maybe we'll have to live. Maybe we'll have to live. Maybe, we'll have to live. Yeah. maybe it'll have, we'll have to live like this forever. Can I tell you? Charge. I have a theory what? that this is really narcissistic. That we're that nobody else has ever existed. We're the only ones. <laughs> it's all simulation. History has been made up. We're the only ones. And when we get old, we go like back to the beginning and just start over. You mean you're the only? Just you. Not even me, like whoever's, whoever's in this world. In and maybe world. I created them, so they're yes. real in yeah. my own uh-huh. mind or whatever like it is. But They're holograms that you created out of your perceptions. Yeah, and maybe, fears. maybe. Yeah. And whatever it is, I have a theory that like by the time it's time to go, it's like going to go back again. Hmm. And it's it just po- keeps it's going. Possible. possible and probable. Because like, who knows? Yeah, who does know? This probably isn't even this. No. I could be hallucinating in a prison right now. I could be with padded walls around me thinking I'm talking to Roseanne and they're like, she thinks she's with Roseanne again. <laughs> That's kind of how I feel. That it's like, <laughs> she thinks she is Roseanne. <laughs> You're not even Roseanne. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's how fucking delusional she is. Oh, God. I know that'll be the way it ends for me at some point. You just cool. what Where I'll be in a nut house and they'll go, that fucking old fat bitch thinks she's <laughs> Roseanne. She's Fuck so it. fucking nuts. She thinks she's, she's Roseanne. Roseanne. As if the real Roseanne 
would ever sink that low. Oh, my that, God. And then, and then they're like poking me and putting me in the, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, something horrifying. Are you scared to die? No, I'm not afraid to die because I almost, uh, you know, I'm not afraid of that. I'm afraid of what happens just before if, here's my, my real thing. If I was on a desert island, I'd have no fear. Hmm. But to have people that you're supposed to love and trust around you is my worst fear. Because you think you're going to say something horrible? Or? Well, because you never know. And that's their last time, their <laughs> last chance to fuck with you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's their last fucking chance that's to fuck true. with you. Like I told my son today, the one you met, I go, wait till you all fucking find out at the reading of the will. Uh, oh, I don't think I won't have the last laugh. <laughs> but you're not going to do that because you want to be there when the will's read and everyone's pissed. So you're going to have to fake your death because you're not going to miss that. There's no way you would miss that. That's uh, the movie I want to write. And yeah. I kind of am writing about a woman that fakes her own death because she's tired of being famous. I love that. Uh, I'll That's I'll great. show you mine if you show me Yeah, yours. I want to read yeah, your... Can you it. tell me a little without giving the... I mean, um, she already did. We just said cancel culture. It's a female version of The Hangover. Oh, I love it! Oh. Yeah. And then I get to play the Mike Tyson part. Yeah, please. <laughs> please. Please. Yeah. And instead of looking for a, a missing groom, we're looking for something that can get us canceled that went missing. Yeah. Hmm, I wonder what that is. Oh, my God. Yeah. That reminds me of when I had to give up an organ to get off. <laughs> the ABC reality show I was on. Wait, what? Yeah, yeah what I had organ? to give up. An, I had to give up my uterus. I had to demand that they take out my uterus so I could get off this ABC this is a true reality story. show. This is one hundred percent true. Kim. They had me on. I was there, Wait, and why? then I went back to yeah. ABC mm. after that. That's very Jewish. Isn't it? Isn't it so fucking Jewish? Well, you know, I forgive them. Well, Why would you forgive Nazis? Oh, my goodness. You stupid cow. Oh this my is my God. internal dialogue. You yeah. know? Oh, I thought you were my mother talking to me. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I had to give up a fucking organ. Well, what I'll just tell the story real we'll quick. Tell that another she was time. in the well, it's she was boring. having problems. It was the night the show aired and it did it didn't do well. It got uh -huh. canceled like in three weeks. But we already knew that the show wasn't gonna do well and they were gonna air all fourteen episodes and they did a really bad job. So she went, she was having complications. I realized they were fucking me over. And they wanted the her to do week. they wanted her to do all the press. So we went to the doctor because she was bleeding and they said you you need to have a hysterectomy, but we can wait until the press tour is done. We could do a DNC and put yeah. off your hysterectomy. And mom know. said, can Are you, you do it? Me? Can you do it Monday? And get me out of it. So she <laughs> elected to have the surgery and then got out of the show, all the press tour. But she didn't have to. Right. She wow. actually Give gave up, up organ. Get... Well, I was in my 50s. Yeah. And I she didn't need it anymore. You know, God, I can't wait to get rid of mine. I'm going <laughs> to pop out a kid and get rid of mine because it causes a lot of issues, to it be does. honest. Popping out a kid is a lifetime thing, girl. I yeah. know. Once you do it, it's not like a dog. You can't take it to the shelter. Well, I don't want a dog. <laughs> <laughs> I have no urge for a dog. Dogs are harder I have harder no patience for dogs. No, they're harder than kids. I love kids. I'm not crazy about pets. Yeah. I've always been like that. And I like. I feel like if I don't have a kid, I will be missing out. It's like... There's two things I've always wanted. I didn't want to be a stand-up. Okay, stand then you'll have to get a man. You can't have a kid yeah. without a man. That's what I, I know. No, I know. don't even try it. Yeah, I don't. know. It That's looks like so a nightmare cool. without a man. It, it looks is. like it's a not nightmare. It's not good for the kid either. No, it's horrible for the kid. So you've got to get a man, and it has to be a strong man, mm -hmm. and not a not a pussy in disguise. I could never be with a pussy, yeah. even in disguise or not. Mm -hmm. Ugh, I do not like the men that are now. So you can't get nobody in Hollywood. No, the can't last breakup I had, the guy, I had to break up with him because the motherfucker wanted to split a meal with me when he took me on a date. I was like, are you fucking kidding me? Are you kidding? Are you kidding me? So you're and not he was feminist, like, well, so. I just noticed a lot of times, especially since moving to LA, that a lot of the women expect you to pay for a date. I'm like, yeah, your nails aren't done. Your hair is not done. You don't have a pussy that I can fuck. Like, what are you bringing to me? Yeah. I'm like, you should just want to pay because it makes you feel good because you're a man. You do know it should that make you feel good to buy a woman a meal. It should make you feel like, like I'm a man. I provided this woman with a meal. If not, like you're like something's wrong. 
biologically <laughs> there's something going on i agree but i'll tell you as a man that grew up in the 80s and post-feminism like we've also been told as men like don't do this it's offensive everything's offensive you want to be sensitive and a lot of us bought that shit I i'm do. straight and up. a lot of them are just assholes that well, don't, women... well they say they like feminism so then let them pay a lot yeah of them are just well that's because well, they're cheap and they yeah. feel like thank they're god cheap yeah assholes. that's why i was pro-feminism so i could wouldn't have to mm-hmm. yeah they're just cheap assholes yeah well, no, no i want a guy to provide so much that when we break up i have nothing <laughs> <laughs> you don't even know how to like take the care of yourself. Like the olden days, you know? I yeah. want to be left with nothing because I had to do nothing for the last three years. And that's worth... the guy. I dated I dated a guy once. He paid for everything. When we broke up, I had nothing. But I was like, the last three years were awesome. Yeah. I don't, well, who needs nothing? I started over. It was awesome. Well, yeah. <laughs> I, I got on the other side of that where I was like, fuck, that's where I started hating women. Yeah. Like well, that's what I'm getting said, at. said, I really hate women once I was on the... Losing sight of the divorce, the money maker, mm. and seeing how that shit goes, and like with the um, like child custody stuff oh, too, is really unfair do. for men. It's horrible. Oh, it's mm-hmm. horrible. Yeah, it's really sad. So it's just all a yank. Yeah. Everything's a fucking yank. I like that. The new thing about my act, and you know, I see young women doing it, is just making fun of women it's so the right thing yeah. the great thing i love it yeah we're very funny and f- funny to make fun of yeah we're and, so crazy and, and no more of that sisterhood horse shit no you guys <laughs> need to call each other out yeah man. right no. really we need do. to call we women can't do out, it right? i do it all the time and yeah. everyone just gets mad at me and it's well, like because you're you're you have I'm no a man. right no, I have. I, I have. I'm the only one that does have a right. I have to. Well, I have to date women. I'm a man. Like I'm mm-hmm. the one that has to put up with your bullshit. You guys aren't nearly as fucked up to each other as you are to the person you're in a relationship with. I would suggest you watch what you're saying to me. He weighed almost ten. Oh, pounds. she does this every podcast. Oh, almost God. ten pounds. Oh, well, I'm talking about dating. I'm saying crazy I'm saying women. He doesn't have a right to open his mouth to me. Right. That's when that's he abusive. came out weighing ten pounds. <laughs> ten pounds is crazy. It's it was. Well, I didn't do he it. He doesn't have the right. Not my fault. <laughs> he don't have the right. I shouldn't to be punished because I was correct fat. Me. You ate too much. Stand in, correct me. Nothing. He don't have that right. No, you see? I'm just that's, saying those are rights for a seven pound baby. I'm who sorry. <laughs> who do you think when a woman's crazy? Who do you think? is victimized from her craziness more a man her or children. a woman uh yeah t- absolutely her children and her men, son. men too what she does? i think everyone around her yeah thank you. Well, i think everyone her including sons herself get a particular uh, punishment but what she does to her daughters oh my god you really fuck up your daughters because yeah. you're like bitch don't you you know <laughs> And then they're just bitches. Yeah. Your daughters are nothing but dirty bitches. I wish I was smart enough to go into the psyche of whatever happens between a mother and a daughter. It is sick and twisted and Ain't like it? this deep connection where you, you it's it women. feels the same you know when i said being a comedian feels like narcissism and self-hatred that <laughs> feels like the same relationship it is. Yeah. my mother like we could be getting along great And she could take a sip of my drink and piss me off. I'm like, why? Like, I don't know what it is. It's like this weird, competitive trigger thing. Trigger thing. And then you feel, and then there's this guilt after where you're like, she's going to die one day. And then you're like, well, this is her fault too. (laughs) Like, I got to tell you, the happiest thing happened to me. What? It's starting to happen. And I knew it would. Mm -hmm. My daughter that you remind me of. Mm hmm. She had a daughter, and I knew it was going to happen. I knew she's going to get hers. My so, mom tells it's me karma. That. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. So the daughter says, "I said I'm going to go over there and visit," you know. And the do- and the little girl says to her mom, my daughter, "Oh, I can't wait till she gets here, cause I need a break from you." <laughs> Oh my God, my heart Uh, swelled. mm -hmm. It swelled in joy. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, I knew I lived a life for that. I heard it comes back harder to you. So great. How fun. Well, I hope I have a daughter. Yeah, but over a son, I think. I mean, there's a lot. But there's something about having having a daughter in my head. I'm like, I want to sculpt them to be like cooler than me. Like, I feel like I'm pretty cool. Yeah, you do. You kind of do. You can't help it. You want to fix yourself in them. Yeah, you try. Mm-hmm. 
But then they end up a fucking psychotic, neurotic. <laughs> Do you think that's what the tension fat is? Fat ass holders yes. like you. That's what the tension is. You want to yeah. fix yourself, and then when it doesn't work, you get frustrated with each other. Yeah, because yeah, they to turn out them. just like you. Yeah. And they're already you anyway, so and they're like, why are you even They trying? hate yeah. you, and then they, they know you. They hate themselves. They know they are you. Yeah. <laughs> it's too much karma. Oh, it's a lot. The whole thing is a lot. Please, can we have some answers? I'm done with the fucking mystery. I bet you, I bet you and me could do a, I, I should, we should do this another time, but I wrote a sketch. We should do, I would ask you to do that sketch with me. I would love to. It's a mother daughter sketch about, uh, kind of this exact thing we're talking about, but it's like, uh, yeah, I wrote a sitcom. I don't want to do it, but they're trying to make me do it anyway. I'm well, down. Uh, I don't know. I'll never do it. <laughs> They're don't do, to it. Make me do it. I don't want. I'm not. But it's such a good scene because it's a mother, a daughter, and a granddaughter. You could do sketches. I just want to do sketches. Yeah, do a five minute I short. I could never do the same thing every no week mm -hmm. for ten fucking years again. I never could do that. I want to do it so bad. You do? Well, you know, I did a little. Well, bit if you're of, gonna have a kid, you would. I really want to act. It's the first thing I ever wanted to do was be an actor. And so I'm like, I really want. I've been auditioning lately, and I love it. Oh, that's so cool! Love it. It's so fun, and it's like, I thought stand up was the only thing I got, I'm good at, and I'm pretty self aware. I know when I'm bad at something, and yeah. I can recognize if it's for fun or if I want to do it. I feel like I am such a good actor, and oh, I think that's cool. Part of it is probably being a sociopath. Because Absolutely right, exactly. Not until I started acting for me, it's really hard for me to. Uh, see other people's perspectives I think yeah. sometimes and when I'm acting I, a lot of people are like oh when I'm acting I get to be somebody else I'm like no when I'm acting I get to be myself but this person and <laughs> yeah. I didn't even know how to be that and yeah. the, the character taught me how to be a different version of myself it's like it doesn't change me No, it's still like your own feelings it's very interesting it is it's fun it's fun um, well, well you'll have to come back yes. I'll come back I, I loved having you. This was so fun. Thank, well, thank you, you so for coming. Fun. This is a dream come true. Thank you. Very I love cool. how the respect you pay my mother. I've always wanted to tell you that. She's so, awesome. Nice. I mean, I am. This is really cool for me. This is one of the well, coolest things I've ever done. So thank you very much. You're very thank sweet, you. and uh, we'll talk. And nice shoes. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Oh, you see.